fam welcome to the show again we are in the middle of our prezi takeover week and yeah it's been fun i got a i got a chance to go live in the community the other day i had my little prezi action going it was super rad so today when we had our our situation on monday we collected a bunch of questions from you guys we also had a qr code it looked something like this that allowed you to go in and pop in your questions. So we've collected questions. And since I don't know the answer to any of them, I bought some friends. <laughs> It'll make this life a heck of a lot easier. So gang, I hope you all got your notebook ready. You need your number two pencil and your field notes guy. If you're not up on the capture system, you're going to forget. So get your notebook ready. We're going to dive in. We got the whole entire Prezi team, not even close. <laughs> but we got the we got the best looking ones from Prezi. We brought them over to come and help us out and so I don't have to be here looking funny by myself. <laughs> I got Vince on the main stage in the middle there. He's ready to go. And right above me, there is Kim. She is awesome. She talked to us on Monday. And then we have Naba. She's me, but for them. And probably much better than I am. And then all the way at the top, we got Paul in his ski chalet looking extremely handsome. So we're going to dive in and we're going to get some questions answered. And yeah, so I hope you guys are ready. Get your pen and paper ready. Let's dive in. Whew. All right. Let's go. Let's see what we got here. Um, you collected questions uh, from the app, right, Vince? That is correct. So all the questions we're going over today were put in the Slido from okay. Kim's presentation on Monday. Yeah. And I'll start a couple from the chat just in case we get any really cool ones in the chat. So, yes, it'd be super option. All right. So, yeah, you can fire away. All right. So I, I do already see some questions coming in in the comments. Uh, if we have time at the end, of course, we'll we'll get to some of those as well. Um, but most of these, you know, this is a prepared presentation based on the Slido that we kept talking about on Monday. So we have a lot of questions here. Basically, what we did was we went through the Q&A, uh, or rather the questions that were asked, and then we put together basically the main themes of the questions being asked. And now we're going to go over some of those questions and answer them here. Uh, I'm also going to hand it over to Paul to discuss a little bit of EDU stuff at the end because there were some education questions that came in. Paul, you haven't even seen these questions. Uh, I'll, I'll just throw them at you, and I already know you have the answers. <laughs> um, very simple type of stuff, like are there education types of accounts that you can sign up for? What's the education community? Things like that. Uh, so that'll be that'll be near the end. So for now, let's go through some of the most frequently asked questions. I'm going to go into the first topic here, 
And one of the main themes I kept seeing was, what is the compatibility with other platforms? So can you use Prezi with Zoom? Can you use it with Microsoft Teams? Things like that. So the question I saw multiple times, can you use these to present on Zoom? These being Prezi video content. And the, the answer, of course, is yes, of course you can. Um, and it looks something like this. This was yesterday. Um, here it is in a Zoom meeting by myself, but if there were other people on the call, of course they would just see my content. Um, so yes, you absolutely can use it on Zoom. Uh, you can use it on Microsoft Teams. Here you go, I've got a different presentation here. I'll point twice. Um, and you can absolutely connect to pretty much any video conferencing platform. Um, I can't actually think of one that it doesn't connect to. And then I got one of these wild questions from one of you animals, which I loved. Love this energy of, can you bring Prezi into Ecamm and then into Zoom and Teams, what I call the trifecta in virtual presentations, <laughs> which I can't even imagine such a scenario. But yes, you absolutely can. So here I am on Ecamm, on Teams, and Zoom all at the same time. Um, if you could pull that off and, and manage all three platforms at the same time, then you are impressive and we should, we should meet. Um, we should very, talk. very cool. <laughs> Yeah, we, we should talk about that, and l let's get you to, to demonstrate some of those, uh, an example of that, because I'd like to see it in action. I imagine, uh, I picture something like that being more where you're broadcasting to multiple places at the same time, rather than meeting on different things at the same time, where there's an actual engagement happening, like a conversation with somebody on the other end. Much easier when you're just broadcasting into YouTube, Facebook, and whatever else there is for live broadcasting all at the same time, right? Obviously, that makes a lot more sense. But yes, good questions. Uh, I like where, where your brain is going in terms of expanding where you can go with this. Uh, and then, of course, another question, really, really simple question, but a very a fundamental thing to understand. For a Zoom presentation, why do you need to use Ecamm if Prezi has a virtual camera? Why not go direct? Well, the simple answer is we're doing this through Ecamm because it's an Ecamm uh, thing we're doing, right? But yes, you absolutely can just use Prezi with Zoom or any other video conferencing platform. And in that case, you do not need to use Ecamm. You could hop on a Zoom meeting and just switch your camera to the Prezi camera and you're good to go. Same thing with WebEx, same thing with Microsoft Teams, same thing with OBS or go to meeting, go to training, Google Meet. Whatever you're, whatever you're meeting on for your virtual conferences, go in there, switch your camera. It's just a virtual camera. Yeah, you know, it's funny that that question came up, too, because I literally just got a, a call in tomorrow to do a, a training for someone because what they're trying to do is run a large in-person conference, but they're going to bring in the guests to, you know, the two screens on the side, right? So, you know, you're standing on stage, you got the guests on the side, and he goes, I want to bring in multiple feeds from different places, but into a place where I'm going to be in person. So if they were doing a presentation, this is why you would bring Prezi into Ecamm, because right now, there's no way to call Prezi and invite for other friends. <laughs> that's why you would mix them together because we're the interview connect, right? So that's a that's a good example as to how someone would, would do that, right? And w although you can have people call in through Zoom, it's, di it's different the way we handle interviews from the way Zoom does it as far as isolating things, isolating people, being able to move them and position them wherever you want. You don't have those flexibilities. So you just have to think it all the way through as to what you're trying to do and then you'll figure it out. Or just call us and we'll tell you how to do it. <laughs> this is why uh, I'm really glad Doc is here too, to jump in because I'm going to have some more things that I'm going to need to bounce off him. So no feel problem. free to jump, uh, jump in a little bit more in the next couple of topics here because there's going to be some questions about that are a little bit more ecammy than prezi and i want to make sure that you're you're here for those so on to the next main theme of questions a lot of questions had the answer of no not really it doesn't do that or you can't do that or at least not yet so i want to get those out of the way first before we jump into the yes you absolutely can do that types of questions um so you know start with the the, the little bit of, not, not a negative, but for now. So a good question here. Will there ever be an option for a green screen or transparent backgrounds? And really, this really falls under the no, not yet, right? Because we're absolutely introducing transparent backgrounds and uh, virtual background options coming soon. I can't put a date on that. Uh, I'm not on the product team. But we internally know some dates, I'm assuming. Uh, very, very soon, you will be able to add virtual backgrounds to your presentation. So if I wanted to swap out this ugly eggshell colored wall, put in a photo, put in something else, I can do that very easily inside of the Prezi. It'll be contained within the Prezi. Um, actually, currently, you can already use Prezi video with a green screen if you have a green screen, especially in Zoom. Uh, obviously, if you're recording videos, you could always do some chroma keying type of stuff. But in, in terms of Zoom, Zoom has a little box that you could check that says, I have a green screen. Don't lie to it. If you don't have a green screen, it's not going to suddenly make it work. But if you do have a green screen and you check the box that says, I have a green screen, it will work. Uh, so you can put in whatever you want on that green screen. So that's a that's a not yet. 
Um, I think the rest of these, can I download as a PDF? Can I download a Prezi as a PDF on a free account? Not currently. So you do need a premium account in order to download and export a Prezi presentation as a PDF. Actually, you know what? I think as of right now, that is that is not the case. I'm pretty sure you, Kim or, Kim or Naba, you might want to jump in on this. I think this is recently a new free feature. Um, does anybody want to confirm that? I can log into my Prezi and see. Yeah, go ahead and try. Hit those three little dots and see if it lets you export as a PDF. When I joined, it was a paid feature. Um, I am not entirely sure now. So we'll circle back to that one, and I'll keep it going for now with one that I absolutely know the answer to, and this is also a not yet. Is Prezi iPad compatible? So not currently. Um, we are working on mobile ver versions of Prezi and Prezi Video, but it's not currently out. So if you tried to use something on an iPad or if you were looking for a Prezi Video app in the App Store, it won't be there. Um, there is what's called the Prezi Viewer app, so you can always view a presentation in its entirety. You can cast it onto a screen if you're doing conferencing or something like that. Uh, In-person conferencing, you could also share your screen from an iPad over Zoom or whatever else. But currently, the Prezi Video product and app does not work on mobile devices. This is the one where I'll pass it to, to Doc because I'm not entirely sure what it's asking uh, when it says, is there a way to do both co-hosts in the same frame? I don't know if that's an Ecamm frame. Uh, you could do much like what we're seeing now where there's four, five of us in frames, right? And we could, of course, change those proportions. We can make us all equal tiles, whatever it looks like. We do have those options, but in terms of Prezi Video, you can't put... I, I guess I'm not really entirely sure what this is asking, so I, I defaulted to no, probably not. Uh, but multiple people yeah. can bring the same Prezi into their same feed at the same time, but they, it would be their independent feeds. Yeah, Doc. So the way the way I would see that is the way I set up Prezi is I have Prezi seeing my Sony it by itself, mm -hmm. and then so I'm here, you know, and then I bring that in through. Prezi as a virtual camera into eCam. So in that particular setup, not possible. Now, what you could do is if you have two machines, which I do, right? I could have all four of us call in on this machine. I can run the presentation off of my other Mac mini and have the virtual camera from here. It just shows up on the network because, hey, we're eCam. So I could have that show up as the camera in the other machine. So in a two-machine situation, you could do it extremely well. And it was actually kind of cool, <laughs> you know, like to have all of us on screen and have the Prezi laying on top. And then we're talking about our brand-new rollout for our, you know, instant tacos. You just add water like in space, and then boom, you got this luxurious taco. Yeah, we can do that. So, yeah, it would take two machines, though. Interesting. Cool. Um, I did see a question in the in the Q and A that I was going to kind of go into when we cover the sort of the technical questions uh, at the end of this, and it was. Um, if, uh, I'll look for the question. I, I have it queued up here somewhere. But we'll, we'll talk to that about ca using cameras and and what exactly you do with the cameras to get that to work the way that you want. Um, yes, great, great comments coming in the the chat. I'm gonna I'm gonna hide that for now because I'm gonna want to read them. So one last of these. Does it matter if you launch Prezi Video before Ecamm slash Zoom or whatever video, video conferencing platform you're using? And the answer is no. It doesn't matter if you're on a Mac. Um, so on a Mac, you could open Prezi Video first and then join an Ecamm call or join a Zoom call and then just connect them. You can open Zoom, Ecamm, whatever, and then 30 minutes in decide, hey, you know what? I want to connect to Prezi real quick. Just open Prezi Video and you're fine. If you are on Windows, you may or may not, so this is, uh, it depends on versions and things like that, but you may or may not see the Prezi camera in your Zoom meeting as a camera option if you don't have the Prezi Video app open. So. For a Zoom meeting, at least, I, I can only confirm for Zoom, um, I just default to opening Prezi Video first. Open Prezi Video first, have your presentation queued up, much like I have here. I personally like to have my content hidden when I join, like this, and then you know start the meeting. I'm already in Prezi Video, I'm already connected, and then when I'm ready to show content, I show my content. Uh, so the answer is most of the time it doesn't matter, but if you're on a Windows on and you're connecting to Zoom, go ahead and open Prezi Video first to make sure that your Prezi camera is showing up in the Zoom camera list. That makes sense. Good. Cool. I'm glad that that makes sense because I explained, over-explained. So let's go into <laughs> the part where the answer is uh, yes, of course, right? So this is the good stuff. Can I use my vintage 2010 Prezi presentations in the current Prezi app? First of all, I love the language. Uh, we refer to them as Prezi Classic, and I think vintage sounds a lot cooler. Um, but the answer is yes, of course. Um, any presentation that you've ever built in Prezi, 
will still work. Uh, obviously, when you built it, you built it with an entire canvas in mind. You had something very different. You didn't have it optimized for video. So yes, you can open it. Yes, you can pull it into the Prezi Video app. It's not going to be optimized for Prezi Video, right? You're going to want to go into that that presentation and probably make some changes, move some things around a little bit, uh, because right now it would just be covering your face as a speaker. It's not really what you want to do. Um, in fact. For those of you who are going, what the heck is a vintage 2010 Prezi presentation and what is there besides what we're looking at here, I have a quick uh, quick little thing to show. So I have an example of a Prezi Classic. I only actually have two because we're that far removed from Prezi Classic. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly share this window right here. And you can now see it. So here's a Prezi Classic. And I'm going to hit present. And I'll show you what, a little bit about what Prezi Classic means. So Prezi in its original form was basically just one big canvas and you take a shotgun approach, right? You throw all your content on one canvas and then you just zoom around to different parts of it. There were no topics, there was no structure, no organization. So you'll notice all of the content is actually here already. And then you start going through the presentation and it was sort of this zooming or moving canvas, right? I keep hitting my right arrow and we go through the presentation here just like this. And it's really great for telling a story, but you could see this would not be optimized for video, right? I would be behind the map. If I were trying, if I brought this into Prezi video, I would be hidden behind my content. So. I would want to go in and optimize it for video, but yes, it does currently work. You still have all the same access you would have had. I would probably just go ahead and modify it to make it a little bit better for video purposes if you wanted to. But this is a Prezi Classic. It's moving around that canvas here. It's really short. I move around to different parts if I want to. Nice, simple presentation here just like this. So I'll come back to my presentation with stopping my screen share. So notice that was actually the screen share functionality built into Prezi Video, which is nice and seamless. I'm right back to my presentation now. I didn't have to share my screen in Ecamm. Uh, and then what you'll want to do, so I mentioned optimizing it for video. When you open that presentation in the editor, we have a button on the top that says Create Video. And when you hit that, it gives you the option to adjust content. So adjusting your content for video really takes a lot of the work out for you. So basically, it, uh, it does like 70% of the work. It's going to do its best to make your presentation optimized for video. And then you could just do some minor tinkering to put the, put the objects where you want them to be. That is super cool. But gang, I mean, really, the only thing you should want from 2010 near you is a bourbon. After 12 years, it gets nice and smooth. Very easy to put down. <laughs> Yeah, um, bourbon and Prezi. You, you should always just have a bottle next to you when you're building a Prezi anyway. It's, it's right Good. in the cat. I have a whole collection right here. <laughs> it really uh, it really gets that writer's block out of the way when you're trying to do the very first thing in a presentation. You kind of just, you, you don't get over anxious. So yes. uh, a couple more yes of courses. Um, over here, can I use my old Prezi account with Prezi Video? The login still works. This is really piggybacking off that last one, right? Yes, absolutely. Your Prezi account, if you never did anything, like if even if you were previously on a paid account, at the at the worst, it would have downgraded to a free account. Um, it wouldn't have lost anything or disabled your account or anything like that. So yes, all your old stuff should still work and should still be there. Uh, is there a place we can find the direction step by step? Yes. So this is where I'm going to throw a curveball at my uh, my colleagues here. They're going to drop some links in the chat and then also probably more follow up links in the in the Facebook channel. Um, just. Page, uh, just links to our learn page where you can watch little tutorial videos and go to our uh, sort of like our forums and all that good stuff. Um, we have a we have a ton of tutorial videos. We have YouTube channels where you can get these sort of micro videos, which I'm a bigger fan of because it's like a one minute video of basically what you're looking for instead of trying to dig through a 30 minute video to find what you're looking for. Um, so kind of just these little micro learning modules. Uh, and then next up we have, can I use both Ecamm and Prezi and bring in additional users in an Ecamm interview? I'm going to toss this one to Doc, but the answer is going to be yes, of course, you can use them. You can have multiple people in Ecamm also using Prezi. I could have Paul and Kim and Naba all connect to Prezi right now, and we could all be hosting this, this Ecamm event together with our Prezi's on screen. Different Prezi's, the same Prezi, doesn't matter. We can all yeah. basically use them concurrently. Yeah, Doc. Yeah, bas I mean, in a nutshell, basically what I would do is take this scene, duplicate it, and then move Paul into the driver's seat, put Vince over here in the pit crew with us, and then you do the next one, put Nob in the driving seat, you know, then put Paul back on the side, same with Kim, same with myself. So yeah, it's super simple. It's just a matter of designing your scenes and, uh, you know, or just having giant one single scene, right? So I can do that as well. Like I have a scene to show Vince's desktop. And also for the step-by-step, -step, I did a live on Tuesday where I just went through it because there's one step. Select your camera and Prezi, come back to Ecamm and select Prezi and Ecamm. Those are the two steps. <laughs> it's like the Jeff Goldblum commercial. 
That's it. <laughs> it is there, remarkably simple. There is no step three. <laughs> Yeah, I will say it, it helps to have a competent host, uh, like Doc was saying. Uh, same thing if you're on a Zoom meeting. You know, It's really nice to be able to spotlight people when you're ready as host and spotlight the, the next person or, or co-spotlight people so that you have the two people who are supposed to be visible at the same time kind of spotlight in the meeting. Ecamm, of course, you could do that through the scenes. Uh, and just having a host who's ready and able to do those quickly on the fly definitely helps. Um, for example, if, if I don't know if how familiar Paul is with Ecamm. He's probably actually more familiar with it than, than we are because of EDU. But if he's not, let's assume Paul doesn't know Ecamm. And I said, okay, Paul, you're hosting this. Put me and Kim together uh, in, a, in a screen, and we're both going to present our, our Prezi videos together. And you would say, I don't know how to do that. So it does help to have a very, very competent host. Or even just, you've seen Ecamm before. That'll also help. Um, yeah. But yes, you absolutely can. We will use both backfill. We will do a tutorial after. Uh, normally after takeover, guys, we do a tutorial of how we envision using the software that we're showing you guys. So there will be one of my world famous tutorials where I make a lot of mistakes <laughs> and I uh, cover them up with really dope editing. Uh, yeah, you'll see that it's coming soon. Don't worry, we got you covered. Yeah, and 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 as always for learning, we encourage making mistakes, right? That's how. Hundred percent. That's how you do it. And then there's one last question: Can we try a free account before adding the upgrade? Actually, I, th I believe this is required. Uh, so it's a good question. I believe you sign up for a free account and then we upgrade you. So a hundred percent, yes, try a free account because that's the bare minimum that you will do is you will do a free account. Uh, and then I do recommend doing the upgrade. Um, you know, at, at worst you get a month of a premium product. And at best, you decide you like it more or you want to introduce it to your entire team or your organization or something like that. So absolutely do the free account. And then there's no reason not to do the upgrade. Um, I thought I saw a question about credit card info. I'm not entirely sure what we require when you sign up for the free account here. Uh, Naba, I don't know if you, want to, if you want to elaborate on that a little bit in terms of like the actual program we're doing with Ecamm right now. I think she's muted. Nope. Hold on, let me try. No, oh, you're open. Hey, it says that I muted her, but I did it. No, not nah, come back. There you go. Okay, can everyone there we hear me go. now? Yeah. Yep. Awesome. So um, if you sign up for just the basic account on Prezi, you shouldn't have to enter any account information. And then if you go to prezi.com slash attendee upgrade, which I think they're going to be sending in the chat soon, you can just drop in the email address you used and then you'll get the upgrade. Yes, there you go. We also have uh, we have you guys on the perks page. So if you go to the the Ecamm fam, you go to the perks page. You'll see how to get in. If everyone forgets the password to perks, just ask Paul. He'll tell you. <laughs> there you go. Great. Yes. So thank you, team, for jumping in on that to answer the stuff that I can't or don't want to. So. Going on to the, I do want to, I just couldn't do it as well. Uh, going on to the next section here, we're, we're just about done with the with the questions that were firmly asked. I do see some coming in on the fly here, uh, but just to finish up, one thing I got. So I threw this in actually like a minute before we hopped on this call because one sort of thing that was coming up in the chat last time. So it wasn't in the Slido, but I, I decided to d dive into the chat a little bit from last time. And one was about asking about PDF overlays and how is Prezi different than just throwing on a PDF overlay or a Canva background or a transparent PowerPoint or something like that. And really, it's just that it's part of a larger presentation, right? So Prezi offers you an entire presentation tool. It's not just a graphic. So I've thrown this transparent PDF that was built in Prezi saved as a PDF and I put it into the Prezi video itself. And then from here, it's part of a larger presentation. So I'm not just saying, hey, here's a PDF. Because it's part of the Prezi, I can zoom into different parts of it. I can point to things if I want to. Uh, it, you know, I, I'm keeping all of that engagement throughout my presentation. I can point to different parts of this chart if I needed to. Whatever I wanted to do, obviously, this is just one example. But I'm able to kind of make it a part of the presentation and keep myself a part of the presentation instead of just saying, hey, here's a static overlay or something like that. Yes, you could, of course, overlay in videos or something interactive. But it's not going to be a part of a larger seamless presentation the way it is here where it was just inside of a topic here. I could talk about these different pie, irregular pie chart components, whatever I want to do here. A lot more engaging to keep that in. So, yeah, go ahead, Doc. Heard no, I was going to say, you know, to, to me, the thing is, um, and anybody who has to work in the corporate space and just deals with the, like, just death by meeting, super boring presentations, whatever, doing that, is amazing and now everyone who's deaf by meeting they think the cool trick is i'm a green screen and pop myself in the corner of the 
the PowerPoint is still boring, bro. You're just boring in front of it. So at least with this, the interactivity of you not really disappearing or becoming a little thing in the corner and being able to pull it in the front minority report style, it's different. Not a lot of people are doing it. That little bit of difference can help you engage your audience so much better. And so it's about making things better. <laughs> Yeah, that 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 really made me laugh. Um, yeah, if you you throw on a PowerPoint as one of your one of your overlays, and then you've got a, a little photo or a little video of yourself in the corner, uh, I, I like that the PowerPoint's still boring, and then Doc, you're just boring on top of it. Yeah, and then you just got two boring things, and and then it's just compounding boringness, right? So you don't want exactly. That. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and put yourself into the presentation. You are your content, right? You become with your one with your content, uh, and it's that much more exciting for your audience and for you. You know, y it's easy for you to check out while giving a boring presentation as well. So it, it, it's nice to keep you engaged there when you're right. one with your content. If you get to interact with it and stuff like that, you can't do that if you're a little bubble in the corner. Um, <laughs> yeah, green screen. Yeah, a lot of good stuff with green screen. When we start introducing the virtual backgrounds, of course, you could add. What we, well, you'll be able to do is you'll be able to add additional content like behind you. Um, so you'll be able to kind of layer in content. I don't want to get too advanced in terms of where you'll be able to go. But of course, if you're if you have the the creative means to do so, then Prezi's not going to stop you. Yep. Very cool stuff. Um, yeah, and then so that's pretty much it for the questions. Uh, with regard to technical questions, I. I'm not going to go too much into this. I might even switch to a screen share. There was just a lot of, um, can you show how to connect to Ecamm? Uh, so I have this still in here. I actually didn't change anything. This was in Kim's presentation last, oh, this was, that was this week, long week. Uh, earlier this week, she had a presentation, and it was talking about connecting Prezi Video to, to Ecamm. I've got some screenshots here. Realistically, I'll probably just maybe just switch to a screen share and just show you, um, because what it recommends here is definitely a route you don't have to really go to present and video call and all that stuff. Really, it's much simpler than it seems. Literally, all you have to do is open Ecamm and switch the camera to the Prezi camera. Um, so what I'll do now, Doc, if you're ready, I'm going to switch ready. to a screen share. And I'm going to just show a completely blank screen and open Ecamm and go from there and show how easy it is to connect to the Prezi camera. Okay, pull your desktop and I'll put you in. All right, let's do it. I'm going to share screen one. And there we are. And there we go. Perfect. So here we are. I am going to open Ecamm. You can see it's not currently open. I'm going to open that up and hope that it does open to this monitor because last time it opened to my external monitor. Give that a second to load. There we go. So you can see it, it defaulted to the Prezi camera because I probably left it on that last time. But it's Ecamm is automatically picking up all of my camera options here. right? If I wanted to just be using my Logitech, of course, here's my Logitech. If I wanted to be using my Prezi camera, there's my Prezi camera, and it's switching through that easy. I even have a third camera, which is the built-in one. I don't know why my built-in laptop one throws on like a sepia tone. Hate it. So I always use my Logitech with the cooler colors. Um, but very easy. I mean, here it is, right? It, it's, it's right here. I can't point to it anymore. It's right here. Very, very straightforward. It's right there in your camera options. You still have all of your full Ecamm capability here if I wanted to add multiple scenes or add overlays on top of this for whatever reason. So if I wanted like a permanent logo in a corner somewhere, I could throw that on as, a, as an Ecamm overlay. That way, as I'm moving through my presentation, the logo would stay permanent here if I wanted something like that. Or if I wanted this up here, I would add it as an overlay in Ecamm, right? That way, no matter where I go into my presentation, that Powered by Prezi video would still be there because then it would just be overlaid into the Ecamm. So pretty straightforward. Um, I don't see any additional questions here. It really is that simple. You just click Prezi camera right here. It's going to show up. Um, you, of course, have your camera options up here as well. You could switch through. But for me, it's easier to just click it on the little thumbnail. Uh, but yeah, any anything you want to add to that, Doc, for the, the eCam side of how easy it is to connect to Prezi video? No, one thing that you can do, um, family, if you guys have to dip in and out of the Prezi camera to your standard eCam, remember the way we see cameras in that little switcher Vince was talking about, one through nine. So if you're in your thing and you're trying to be on the fly, you don't have a stream deck, and I want to go from the Ecamm camera to the Prezi camera, and the Prezi is second in the list, press two on the keyboard or three on the keyboard or four, which are wherever you're located. And so that's another wow. way to switch cameras on the fly without having to mouse up and click the little thing. Then the way you're, you keep your hands out of the frame or like me, whack the microphone. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. Yeah, solid. And you know what? I, I would be curious to know if, uh, I only know for Zoom. I'm not super familiar with, with Ecamm. If I check the green screen option in Ecamm, 
I don't know. Prezi video might work with this. Um, I would have to experiment with that myself or, or ask um, somebody else. Somebody you, it it, you, it uh -huh. should work, um, but the background would have to come from our side. Because if we drop the background here, like I don't really use green screen. And honestly, people, you should avoid it at all costs unless you're going to do it correctly. But if I were to do this and switch this on because my lights are blue, um, I, we have blue screen as well. So you see, I just become, you know, sort of weird looking back there. And so this is how you would present inside inside of uh your program because the camera would now show show up as wait i just green screen somebody else <laughs> we don't want to do that i'll fix that yeah so th this is what you would see with prezi laying on the top right so that's how you would do it but at, at all costs honestly um leave it alone <laughs> unless you really really have to or unless you're going to invest in all of the lights and everything it takes to do a, a green screen or blue screen properly because it You've been in the meetings where people try to, like, like Vince said, don't lie and say you have one when you don't because it will wig zoom out. Yeah, it's difficult. Your weatherman screws it up once a week. Just watch the news at your house and they have a, you know, multi million dollar green screen set up. <laughs> so, yeah, just stay away from it. <laughs> Do yourself a favor. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't lie to Zoom. Uh, don't don't lie to your video conferencing apps. Um, so I'm going to use that in one of my trainings. Please don't lie to us. <laughs> That's great. That is so great. You know, just a general de decent advice for most things. Um, but yeah, you know, we've got all these instructions. Like the formal route of going for connecting to eCam or any video call is click the little video call button and then search for the app you're looking for. But realistically, in practice. It's so much easier. You just open eCam, you open Zoom, and you just switch to that. You just switch to the virtual camera. It, it really is very, very simple. Uh, I'm looking through here, and, and you know we covered all this. Open eCam, switch to the Prezi camera. It's that simple. Um, so with that, I mean, that's pretty much the content done um, in terms of answering the questions that were in the Slido. I'm looking through the chat here if there's anything else I can answer. I'm looking I don't see anything. I don't see anything big. One thing that I will say that I really like this comment from Indy, which is just great. The fact that when you're pointing, you actually point to what you want to speak about instead of guessing where on the screen. That's one of the incredible portions of doing your prezo through Prezi because you can see what you're doing. Because for us, we're always guessing and it's always opposite of what you think. So, yeah, that's pretty incredible. And I love the overlay. That's just that's just dope. Yeah, bringing in transparent graphics over the top of you and kind of spotlight your content while you drop into the background is a really nice effect uh, just because you're clearly highlighting something else, but you get to kind of interact with all your content. Um, cool. I think I have so. to use this one more because that, that comes in handy. Um, you know, I get often questions about gear, right? So I could be talking about a new camera. I could bring a, a PNG of the camera up throw it in some editing app and make it, you know, 50% transparent. I can actually touch the buttons with it on the screen, but I'm behind here showing you, okay, make sure you use this knob, set your thing. Cause yeah, we, I just went through that talking, someone through setting up a camera the other day. It would have been really cool to bring it to do the way you just did it with the overlay. So I think I have some ideas. We might see some changes in the training people. <laughs> Cool. That'll be exciting. If you start doing that, uh, I'd love to, to join one and maybe even use you as, um, I don't know, something. A, that's a guinea like pig. A, that, that's what yeah, I do. Yeah, guinea pig. <laughs> I'm a professional <laughs> guinea pig. People, right. people would like to see somebody with, like you using Prezi in that sort of way because people, I'm sure people could learn a lot. Um, I do see a question that just dropped in the chat that I could answer immediately. Could you preserve the animations when importing a PowerPoint to Prezi? So good question. Thanks for throwing it onto the, onto the screen here, down here. Um, the answer currently is, is no. So when you import a PowerPoint via the actual PowerPoint import function, what it does is it takes your entire PowerPoint and it flattens each slide. So it, it removes the animations. It gives you the final form of that slide. So that's why I typically recommend, you know, if you have the time, don't just import the PowerPoint in, but rather take the PowerPoint content and build a Prezi with it because then you get to do that much more, right? You get the full capability of zooming into things, fading things in, fading things out, um, creating topics, creating an actual structure, telling a narrative, telling a story. Uh, a lot of good stuff there by just building it in Prezi, and it doesn't take very long. So I, I do recommend that route. But yeah, if you import a PowerPoint, it'll just be the flattened slide. Dude, that's great. And Jim, you're correct. That uh, transparent feature can be so handy for tech support. <laughs> that is amazing. That is incredible. Yes, I could use that the other day too when someone was asking how do you zoom things in on a Mac. 
and and to me, I, I worked at Apple for ten years, so that's that's Mac one hundred and one. That's like, how do you drive a car? You step on the accelerator. They seriously <laughs> didn't know, <laughs> so it just I, yeah. I forget because I this is second nature to me, right? So very cool to be able to bring up and overlay the way you did and share that. Uh, we want to talk about education real quick before we allow you guys to go eat lunch. We out of time. All right, I'll pass it over to Paul. Sure. So, what questions did you guys have? There was a, I guess the questions were about education accounts or like what's different from the education version versus the, the, um, sure, I guess the normal yeah. version. What is normal? Yeah. Yeah. I think well, if you can just give a like a synopsis of the education program, Paul, that would be great. Sure. Um, well, insofar as the different accounts, uh, there's several actually. There's a the free basic that Vince was talking about that you can just sign up and go with, and that gives you pretty much uh, video design and present. Um, and then there's also EDU Plus, uh, and that's about three bucks a month, which is super reasonable for educators. Uh, you can convert PowerPoints, it gives you some privacy controls. Um, there's some advanced video editing, uh, story blocks that you can do voiceover um, and remote presenting. And then the Pro gives you everything, so EDU Pro, if you're an educator, it's five bucks a month. So again, it's really super reasonable. Um, it gives you everything that uh, Vince was going through. And then of course, there's the EDU Teams one that if you're part of a university or you're really using it a lot, uh, let's say you're part of an organization, an educational ed organization where you have a series of content developers that are creating at the same time, those Teams accounts are really uh, valuable to have. Um, we do have a, a a pretty robust edu community um, there's a lot of teachers out there and professors that are using it at university as well as k-12 and um, it's pretty remarkable we're on uh, facebook obviously but we're starting to do webinars where we talk about practice as it merges with the prezi technology so how are people using video what are the best practices around instructional videos um, and then we also get into uh, doing uh, sort of webinars or classes, right? When you're doing a, a Zoom class, for instance, where you see a lot of kids are falling asleep on the screen. How do you energize that? What are the best practices to help them out so they don't fall asleep and actually get the most out of their education? Um, and that goes from K-12 through university. Uh, we have one coming up in March, actually, that uh, actually in February, excuse me, another one in March, um, where we call in uh, practitioners to uh, talk about what they're doing, how they're doing it, and uh, it's pretty fabulous. And we get a, an international community, which I just love. Usually when you're in education in the U.S., you just talk to U.S. teachers, but we have folks coming in from the Philippines, uh, Great Britain, Sweden, all over the place. It's pretty awesome. Um, and then finally, there's the uh, Prezi Educator Certification Program, uh, and there's four courses involved with that, with a fifth that's into training. Uh, the four courses are ones on using Prezi Design, so that lovely infographic that Vince had up, uh, you can create in Prezi Design um, and then transport into your Prezi like he showed you. And Vince, I love that. I'm going to have to try that out and show the educators that because that's really cool. Uh, what Wh you did. Which, one, which thing, the, the design, just that, that, doc, uh, that design infographic? Exactly. The exactly. transparent overlay, just yeah. Just doing that, that transparent overlay is really hot. I know that there's a professor in Alabama that's been doing that on his own. Um, and I think you'd be interested in seeing the loop in with uh, design. Um, there's also a course in uh, the basic video, so the quick record as well as uploading PowerPoints and Google Slides. Uh, there's also the advanced video where they're using uh, Present uh, as part of their work, um, which is you know much more customized uh, types of content that you're creating there and also a little bit more complicated, but well worth it once you get it set up. And then there's the web conferencing one. And again, what we're doing is we're integrating practice into the use of technology um, in each one of these courses. And that's kind of unique. It's not just uh, learning the tech and going out there and setting you free. It's about helping educators boost and, and bolster their practice through an educational technology lens, uh, which they're not used to. They're not often trained that way in, in their university programs. Um, and then finally, there's the trainer program. So if you complete all four of those courses uh, and you agree to train 100 people during the course of the year, you can be a 
Prezi educator trainer. Um, and that's, uh, I think you even get t-shirts and things like that. So it's well worth going through the program. You'll see a lot of me on videos uh, guiding people through it. And you'll see a lot of Vince too, because he takes on the technical challenges uh, of uh, creating these things and presents out that way. Uh, that's so really cool. That's, it is really cool. And uh, again, the, the, the uh, uh, community is growing and the educators are just awesome. They're very willing to give and share and I'm always surprised what they post on Facebook and what they've created. It's it's great. Stuff yeah, that way you get to see the creative people in your community. Gary Jones, who is a professor, he said Prezi has been beneficial for him as a professor. So thank you, Gary, for that. And I really love this comment here because uh, Dina, one of my students, she's been doing some recipe stuff. And so it'd be, it is it will be really cool. That immediately will set you apart from all the other people doing cooking stuff on say YouTube or in your private zoom cook along classes, things like that. Everyone, no one else is doing that. So to be able to pull up a recipe and have it, you know, overlaid on the screen while you're doing stuff. Oh, that would be just incredible. See Vince, everyone's going to steal your idea now. <laughs> That's really rad. That was super yeah. cool. Um, and thank you. Thank you for putting that in. I guess the last question before we let you go is, should there be an issue um, importing a keynote presentation? Oh, I know what it is. Kiehl's. I know. Wait, everybody tell me if I did this right. You have to export it as a PowerPoint first and then bring it into Prezi because as you know, keynote magic moves don't translate any place else but keynote. Is that right? right? It's got to be a dot, dot PPT or dot PPTX file. Okay, so yes, that's same that's with the Google trick. Slides or yeah, any any sort of slideshow format presentation, which you know eventually you're gonna you're just gonna build a Prezi with that content, right? And it's gonna be that much more engaging. But in the meantime, while you've got it as a slide deck, PowerPoint or dot PPTX file. That is right. Now, is there a difference between Prezi Online and Prezi Desktop? <sighs> that is a loaded question. Um, so <laughs> Naba, would you like to give a little bit of an explanation of what we're doing tomorrow in terms of actual content creation side of things? Yeah, yeah, I can give a, a little bit of a preview. So Vince is going to be joining the Ecamp community tomorrow. Just he's going to be going live in the Facebook group, and he's going to give a tutorial on really like how to create a basic presentation in Prezi, move that into Ecamm, and then you know also share how to go live if needed again. But I did see a question come in, you know, like about topics. Um, so Vince is going to be diving in more to Prezi present, how that works online and how that also functions in the app. So please stay tuned for all, a whole in-depth process tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. See, I've been practicing, Paul, how you know, because <laughs> it is it is really cool. And yes, gang, don't forget, I did put links in the chat. If you scroll up a little bit, Lens, you'll see where I put in their um, quick start tutorial and their other tutorials. And when you log into Prezi, if you go to all projects down in the bottom, you'll see Paul and some other tutorials there as well. So just log into your Prezi. Some of the tutorials are right there as soon as you open the door. So, yeah, people have fun. <laughs> This was super cool, gang. I appreciate all you guys coming through and showing us all of the glorious things that you can do in Prezi. Don't forget, people, the only way to get good at this is to practice. So while we have them hanging out with us for the next day and a half, jump into the Facebook group, open up Prezi, and just start building. Like, no one's going to yell at you for building while you're trying stuff and just try the stuff. And then that way, we'll be able to find you the answer or... You know me, I'll, I'll run head first into a spinning fan, so I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'm not afraid of it. Let's do it. Let's do it, gang. I love that. That is so dope. I love it. That is red. Thank you guys for coming through. Don't forget, um, we'll be back here to do some more fun things with the Prezi things. Um, but yeah, gang, this was incredible. Like this whole week and when we were thinking about doing this, we knew that you, the way you guys think, your creativity, the way you guys come up with the most insane ways to use applications that the applications didn't think they're supposed to do, this is why we love you. So keep doing the work and we'll see you again. Don't forget demo tomorrow and then Vince and I will be in the community tomorrow making trouble. So thank you guys for coming through. Please pop the like button on the way out because there's like 50, 1100 of you guys here and only 19 of you guys press the button. Come on, people. You know how this works. Aloha. <laughs> What? <laughs>
Come and 